To call your name, oh Jesus, Jesus, Mary, little baby, Jesus, every day, every day, your name your is, name is the oh, we're calling you Jesus, Jesus, oh sweet Jesus, Jesus, oh how I love. communion and offering uh. yeah <laughs> man I'm there man I'm there oh what wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me by by Yeah, just to show 
His matchless grace, Jesus suffered for the race. You know it was in God's sin, but need alone. Hey, oh, what love. It was his matchless love. All along, yeah. One more time. Oh, 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 He gave to me when he suffered all alone. As we have made it now to the portion of worship, where we are to recall the ultimate sacrifice that was paid on behalf of you and I. May I? May I, I think, brothers, we need some, some people may need some communion over here. We need one more over here. I'm going to ask that if you are at home, that you're sitting down and you're doing absolutely nothing but putting your mind back to the day that Jesus died on the cross for you and I. I'm going to ask that you are here in the parking lot, that you're not allowing anything to distract you from this particular occasion. If you think about it, some people have a hard time sacrificing $2. Well, Jesus sacrifices his life that you and I may live. It's found in Matthew 26, verse 26 and it reads while they were eating Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat, and eat this is my body then he took a cup and when he had given thanks he drank it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for the many for the, for the forgiveness of sin. May you please now join me in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, how to behold in the divine name, we approach your throne right now. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you have given us. We thank you for this moment right now where we are to remember the ultimate sacrifice that was paid on behalf. Lord, we pray that you bless this communion. We pray that we be, we pray that we partake of it in a manner of being pleasing your sight. Please bless the bread as well as the juice, Lord, the wine. We pray, Lord, that we, again, we, we're not thinking about anything but you. Please come to lead us and guide us. In the Son, we pray. Amen. May you now open the bread and take it. Likewise, may you also open the cup and take it as well. Separate aside from 
communion is another important act of worship. It is tithe and offering. As found in Luke chapter 6, verse 37, it says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. I feel that I don't have to elaborate on the importance of tithe and offering. I'll say it this way. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being running, exercising, and you're having a hard time breathing? How would you feel if God said, Well, since you didn't obey my command, I'm going to take your breath right now from you? Now, I know for some that may be rather extreme, but we do understand that God does allow us to be here right now. He is allowing us to be a part of this day. Now, when I used to disobey my parents, used to, you right, used to, when I used to disobey my parents, they, 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 they had a piece of leather that I, I, I really did not, I did, I did not want to experience what they had to offer. But yet and still, because I disobeyed them, they had to show me that I was theirs, and they had to discipline me for what I had done. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if I can't stand what Miss Joanne, Mr. Bobby put on me, I show in the world can't stand what God may put on me for not obeying his word. So please, 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 take, listen, let me make it easy for you. That money, it ain't yours anyway. It's God's. So y'all know how you, when, when, when you have somebody else's stuff, you want to be very, very careful with their stuff. You don't, you don't mess it up. Don't mess up God's money. Because he will give what's his. Please join me in prayer. Father, once again, we thank you. We thank you for this moment right now. For tithe and offering. Oh, we pray that we partake of this cheerfully not giving grudgingly because we know that you love a cheerful giver please lord continue to bless us and keep us in son we do pray amen i always think about crazy stuff i know y'all listen to the radio quit playing like you don't i always think about some of the songs they sang on the radio should have been some church songs but they put a girl on it. Yeah, yeah. There's one song they made real famous that uh Love So many people use your name in vain. That's in the song book. Y'all didn't know that, did you? He made about a woman. Can I take one back right quick? I've got sunshine high on a cloudy day. And when it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. Well, I guess you could say, what can make me feel this way? My God, talking about my God, my God. That's all I want. That's it, that's it, that's all I want. See what the Lord has done. Can't you see what the Lord, Lord has done? You really ought to count your own. Oh, and see what the Lord has done. Come on and see what the Lord has done. Come on and see what the Lord has done. Hey, you really 
ought to count your arm and see what the Lord Well, don't you know that he woke you up this morning and see what the Lord Don't you know that he woke you up this morning and see what the Lord The song says you ought to count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. Anybody count their blessings this morning? Come on now, don't fool me now. Don't fool me. If we were honest enough, we got too many blessings to count. Amen. But that's a symbolic song, which means that you got to just keep on thanking the Lord for every blessing that he brings in your life. And surely all of us who laid down last night, God kept the death angel back just one more time. Woke us up this morning in our right mind and started us on our way. And for that, we ought to be eternally grateful. Brother Noosa, if you could cut this off for me. We ought to be eternally grateful to Almighty God. I'm thankful 
to your wonderful minister. I call him a bibliotician. He's a, certainly a Bible student of the word and a great gospel preacher. And we thank him in his absence today for inviting us to come and to say another word on behalf of God Almighty, our Father uh, and our Creator. It's good to be with the Northwest family. We're going to continue to pray for Brother and Sister Beard and the family. We're going to continue to pray for the Oliver family, for the Ashford family, that God will continue to bless them in a mighty, mighty way. Uh, lest I be long, we're going to get to the text. Y'all ready for some preaching this morning? We'll get to the text. But I've been asked by uh, several people uh, if I would just sing a verse or two. As a matter of fact, I got a text from Sister Oliver and said, you sing for everybody else, you can sing for me. And, uh, and she asked for two verses. So let's go on and do this little song and we'll get into the, to end the message. Is that all right? Okay. Amen. Give me a song to sing like Jesus. Oh, Lord, when I am faced, face to face, we in my storm, all of my storms, oh, Lord, give me a voice. I need some words when my enemies at my table. In the midst of my trial, oh Lord, give, give me a song. First verse. He stood before the cross of Calvary. Yes, he did it just for a sinner like you and like me. He prayed in the garden, faithful garden. He went to garden Gethsemane. Said, Father, dear Father, oh dear Father, let thy will be. Come on and tell the Lord, give me a song, a song to sing. Oh, like Jesus, every day, yes, and when I am faced, I'm face to face, we in my storm, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, give me a voice, I need some words, when my enemies at my table, in the midst of my trial, oh, Lord, give, give me a song. Last verse, help me now. Well, the sky was all covered. It was covered oh, with darkness. Oh, the crowd stood around as he hung on a tree. Oh, but he prayed to the Father. Blessed Father, he said, Dear Father, forgive them, please. For they know not, they don't know what they're doing, doing to me. Then he hung his head and he died for you and me. Come on and tell the Lord, give me a song, a song to sing. Just like Jesus, every day, yes, and when I am faced, I'm face to face. We in my storm, all of my storms, the Lord give me a voice. I need some words when my enemies all around me in the midst of my child. Oh, Lord, give. Come on and tell me when you need the most. In the midst, in the midst, right in the middle, in the midst of my child. When your bills are high and your money is low, give me. Oh, in the midst, in the midst, right in the middle, in the midst of my child. When COVID-19 is ruling this world, that's when you need the most. In the midst, in the midst, right in the middle, in the midst of my child. When you lose your loved one, in the night seem long. Yes, in the midst, in the midst, right in the middle, in the midst of my child. Oh, Lord, give, give me a song. Amen, amen, amen. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. 
Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. While you're getting there, your minister asked me to convey a message to you. Although COVID is trying to rule, uh, how many of you know that COVID is not going to have his way? Come on, bump if you hear me now. And so he asked me to let you know that uh, this uh, series of lessons that he had planned in his heart to preach uh, uh, confusion, uh, Christianity before confusion, is going to be regenerated. And he's going to come back and he's going to reset the clock and uh, give those wonderful messages uh, that he has intended to give. And he will be giving you more information in the days to come. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 20. I believe there's a message here that will bless us if we allow it to from the word of God. The Bible says in Acts 20 verse 7, we met, and I'm going to read from the message translation. Paul says, or the writer says, we met on Sunday to worship and celebrate the Master's Supper. Paul addresses the congregation. Our plan was to leave, watch this now, our plan was to leave first thing in the morning. But Paul talked on way past midnight. Amen, somebody. We were meeting in a well-lighted upper room. A young man named Eutychus was sitting in an open window. As Paul went on and on, Eutychus fell sound asleep and toppled out of the third story window. Is that in your Bible? When they picked him up, he was dead. Paul went down. Somebody say Paul went down. Paul went down and stretched himself on him and hugged him hard. No more crying, he said. There's life in him yet. Then Paul got up and served the master's supper and went on telling stories of the faithful, or the faith until dawn. On that note, they left. Paul going one way, the congregation another, leading the boy off alive. Turn to somebody and tell him he was alive. And full of life themselves. I want to talk to you from the subject this morning. Don't let your fall be your all. Don't let your fall be your all. Turn to somebody and ask them, have you ever fallen? Beloved, let us notice the definition of fall. The word fall means to move downward. Typically, rapidly, and freely without control. Anybody ever fell in here? Uh, and it means to fall down lower from a higher level. Uh, it means to be defeated in terms of competition. Fall means to be or to die in battle in terms of war. In terms of spirituality, the word fall means to commit sin. Also in life, typically speaking, in spiritual or physical terms, when someone has fallen, it means they have passed into a specific state and is seen as a failure. Anybody in here ever felt like a failure? No one ever, beloved, no one ever wants to fall in life. Whether physically or spiritually, nobody wants to fall. Beloved, let me put it to you this way. It does not matter whether you are careful, cautious, or clear conscience. It does not matter if you are the sharpest tool in the toolbox. It does not matter if you are sanctified or cranktified. It does not matter if you are equally balanced, sure-footed as a road runner. It doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're educated or uneducated. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It, I wish I had some help in here. It doesn't matter whether you're healthy or unhealthy. It doesn't matter whether you are a novice or an expert. It doesn't matter if you're a new convert or an old tenure saturated sensational saint. One day in your life you're going to make a fall. Can I tell you, you'll fall as Christians. Don't you sit in here and act like you're wearing your halo. Christians fall. Turn to somebody and tell them, I saw your last fall. 
<laughs> I saw you last fall. Christians will fall. Faithful saints, Brother Newsom, fall. Dedicated deacons, fall. Ever ready elders, fall fall prolific preachers fall powerful pastors fall i don't care if you've been washed in the blood of the lamb if you get to church on time if you attend every worship service if you attend every bible study if you're on every devotion keep on living and you're gonna fall i wish i had some help in here not only does christians fall not only does christian fall but celebrities fall Ask Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer, but he took a fall. Ask Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all times, but he took some falls. Ask Tiger Woods, one of the greatest golfers, but he'll tell you one day I fail. Ask Bill Cosby, the greatest actor, humanitarian, he took a fall. Am I right about it? Ask, Bill, ask Jimmy Swaggart, that crying world evangelist, and he'll tell you sometime you're all more than once. I wish I had some help in here. Ask William Jefferson, Bill Clinton, one of the greatest presidents. He will tell you, one day I fell down the stairwell of Monica Lewinsky. And I, I wish I had some help in here. But I took a fall. Not only will you fall as a Christian, not only will you fall as a celebrity, but even if you're rich, even if you're well fortune, you will fall. The popular pharmacy chain Fred's had a good run, but in the fall, in the fall of 7,000 stores, am I right about it? The popular chain Walgreens took a fall and announced the closing of 200 stores in 2019. I don't care if you're rich, you can still fall. Ask J.C. Penney's 114th birthday celebrated, but they closed 27 stores in 2010 and more in 2019 and more in 2020. 2020, I tell you, you will fall. Ask Sears and Roebuck. Oh, see, some of y'all don't know the name Roebuck, but ask Sears and Sears will tell you we had to close 262 stores in 2018. I come to tell you, it does not matter if you are a millionaire or a billionaire, you will fall. Ask somebody, have you ever fallen? How many of you know that mistakenly falling is never fun. Did you hear what I said? Mistakenly, accidentally falling is never fun. And let me tell you something. You know, you tend to laugh when folk are big and fat and fall. Oh, y'all ain't want to be real. Y'all ain't going to keep it real up in here. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds or if you're 120. It's no fun to fall. Many times when you physically fall, you bump your head. And Lord knows, most of us have crazy. We don't need to be bumping our head. Sometimes when you fall, you scarp your knees. And sister girl, you know you think you're fine. You don't want your knees messed up. Sometimes you fall and you cut your hand. And many of us already got chicken scratch handwriting. So you don't need to damage your hand. Uh, many times you slip, trip, and bust your lip. And some of us don't look that good already. So I'm trying to tell you, it's just not fun to fall. Turn to somebody and tell them falling hurts. Come on, tell the other person on the other side, falling hurts. Now notice in the text, notice in the text, there is a young man by the name of Eutychus who just didn't have a fall, but he had a great fall. But not only does falling hurts, but sometimes falling will fool around and kill you. Did you hear what I said? Fall the right way. And let me tell you, you ain't got to fall far. Just fall the right way. Fall in a mess around and kill you. Church, do I have a witness here this morning? Has anybody in here ever had a great fall? I'm not talking about a little slip. I'm not talking about a little trip. But I'm talking about a big fall. I'm talking about a fall that left you with a limp, dazed, and maimed. <laughs> Some fall hurts so bad, it will, take a, it will make a Christian cuss. Okay, y'all going to be phony up in here. I, I said, some falls hurt so bad, it'll make a Christian cuss. Turn to somebody and ask them, have you ever cussed when you fell? Now, don't lie now. Don't lie. Don't tell a lie. Just don't say nothing if you can't say nothing at all. 
Back to the text. Back to the text. You know, some of y'all didn't fall. Some of you, all you got to do in the night is just bump your toe walking. You ain't even got to fall. And you'll say something that you don't say in Sunday school. Lord have mercy. Uh, before we get to Utica's fall. Before we get, somebody say they'll cuss real loud. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Before we get to Utica's fall, let's take an exegetical walk so that we can get a proper hermeneutical understanding and application. Number one, I want to look at, if I have time, I want to look at seven observations. If I ain't got time, I'll just get through it as far as I can. But observation number one, you can be doing the right thing at the right time and in the right place and still have a terrible fall notice the text how many of you know how many of you know that you can be minding your own business with a pure intent in your heart and do the right thing you prayed about it you repented and asked the lord to help you to be better uh, as a personal Christian, uh, you ask the Lord to act, have, ask you to uh, ask the Lord to help you be better as a person and as a faithful Christian. Whatever it was you done, you put it behind you. You made up your mind that you're not you that you're going to serve the Lord faithfully. You made up your mind that you were going to serve the Lord where, when, and how He expected you to do it. You made up your mind that you were not going to let your spouse, your family, your children children your job your career your boo and even some of y'all got some booger bands but you made up your mind that you wasn't gonna let nobody come between you and God you were doing what you were supposed to you were worshiping God you were edifying your brothers and sisters when you were supposed to when you when the church is called together you were there but goes the devil and out of nowhere you fell before you knew it how many of you know that sometimes it's not the devil that's using somebody to cause you to fall sometimes he simply uses time and opportunity even when you were supposed to be, when you were where you were supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, sometimes the devil ain't got to send one of his angels. He just used time and opportunity. Notice in the text, Eutychus was at church. I wish I had a witness here. He wasn't in the nightclub. He wasn't in there doing the doo-doo brown. I'm going back on some of y'all. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that. He wasn't back there doing the cabbage patch. You know, he wasn't back there doing the running man. You know, he wasn't in the cut hitting a little weed and drinking a little E&J. Okay, some of y'all don't know what E&J is. He wasn't drinking no irk and jerk. Come on, bump with me if you hear me now. But he was in church. He wasn't in the little funny place with the little pole in the center of the aisle. Say amen when you can. He was in church, worshiping and celebrating God, listening, listening to the word of God. He was listening to the word of God being preached, but he was being, he was being preached to by a long-winded preacher. Say amen when you can. When the wares, watch this. He was in church, listening to the word. When the wares and the weariness of life Begin to bring him down to the point of exhaustion. So much that he had a terrible fall while worshiping. Beloved, how many of you witnesses here today in this holy uh, live sanctuary who not only ashamed to admit, but will declare that sometime the weariness of life will wear you down. Am I right about it? Sometime the wares of life will wear you down. Sometime it will warp your worship. The weariness of life will whoop your will. The weariness of I wish I had some help in here. The weariness of life will wobble your spiritual walk. The weariness of life will almost wipe you out spiritually. But how many of you know that if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand life winds will come. Life winds may blow. You may sway one side. Life 
life will make you weary. You might get wobble knees. Sometimes you might even have to do the matrix. But if you hold on and plan it in faith, God will see you through. Life will wipe you out spiritually sometimes. Turn to somebody and tell them, don't you dare fall asleep in church. Come on, tell somebody else, don't you dare fall asleep in church. Yeah, 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 we all been there. Yes, you might get weary. You might become worn. But don't you dare fall asleep while worshiping and working for the Lord. Observation number two. Look again at the C part of verse number seven. The Bible says that although they were worshiping, they were already planning to leave in the morning to do some good work for the Lord. No doubt some of you are sitting in this holy sanctuary of your sanctified mind. You are now in the, uh, uh, you, you are no longer in the club, but you're in the sanctuary of God. But you're already planning to do greater things for the Lord. Am I right about it? You had a fall in your marriage nobody folk try to make you feel like you can no longer counsel somebody else because you took a fall some of us have had falls in parenting and now you feel like you can't give nobody else no advice because your baby is locked up in prison some of us had a fall in our finances and we feel like we can't give nobody else any advice church how many of you know that there is learning in every fall did you hear what I said there's something for you to learn in every fall there is a promotion watch this now there is a promotion in every problem I think I said something I said there is a promotion in every problem if you're tripping over something in the floor you learn that you need to get it and move it out the way there is a learning in every fall Turn to somebody and tell them, don't let your fall be your own. Observation number three. Notice in verse nine, Eutychus fell out of a window. You see that in your Bible? He fell out of a window. Now notice, a window is a place of observation. A window is a place of spectators. It's a favorite place for nosy folk. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some of y'all must be, some of y'all must be nosy. I said it's a favorite place for nosy folk and snoopers. Hold on to that. I'll be back to that in just a moment. Secondly, notice the first responders uh, took one look at Eutychus after his fall, and they declared that he was dead. These were the first responders. You know, there's always somebody, as soon as they hear something that happened bad to you, they're the first ones to call you. But notice something. Notice here. Notice here. Notice here. When they got to him, they said and declared he was dead. First responders are normally considered heroes. Am I close to being right? First responders are normally considered heroes. First responders are normally unselfish folk who just want to help you out. The first responders didn't have, watch this, these first responders did not have a PhD in medicine. Hello? Hello? They didn't have an RN license. There was no record that indicate that they were even a CNA. But nonetheless, they felt the need not only to speak on Eutychus' fall, but they felt the need to pronounce his doom. I got it, Doc. Thank you. They had, they, 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 they had the a mitigated gall to pronounce his doom. How many of you know here today uh, can witness the fact that when you fail, many of your first, second, and third responders declared that you were dead? Hello, somebody. Don't you sit here and act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Your mother and your father said you were good for nothing after your fall. 
Your siblings said you are done with after your fall. Some of your co-workers said you will never survive this last write-up that they gave you. Your business com com competitors said you will never recover from your last bad quarter. Your friends said you will never be the same after your brutal assault. Your church folks said you will never lead another ministry after this pregnancy without a husband. Folk will pronounce your doom. But then watch observation number four. But then notice, as I said, Eutychus fell out of the window. But when Paul went down to him, Paul went through the door. A door is a place of opportunity. A door is a place of new beginnings. A door is a place of change. A door is a place, y'all still with me? A door is a place of exit from one bad place and an entrance into a good place. A door is a place of opportunity. Watch this, observation number five, I'm almost done. Notice in verse 10, the actions of the responders who was able to help. The Bible said Paul went down to the fallen. Watch this, he went down to the fallen. Church, you got to get down to the level of the fallen. No doubt Paul had to get the first responders out of the way because they rushed to the fallen, but they couldn't do anything to help him. You got to tell folk who can help your situation. I wish I had some help here. You got to learn how to tell folk who can't help your situation to get out of my way. Some folk, they act like they care, but all they are are hinderers. You got to have the will. You got to have the guts. You got to have the courage. It doesn't matter if they got your same last name. It doesn't matter if the same blood in your veins are in their vein. It does not matter if they got a high title. It does not matter if they got a high position. If they ain't helping you, you got to learn how to Tell him, get out of the way. Turn to somebody and tell him, get out of my way. The Bible said, Paul, watch this. Paul not only went down to their level, he not only had to get the first responders out of the way, but watch this. The Bible said, Paul stretched himself. Watch this now. Don't miss this. I'm closing. He stretched himself over and hugged the fallen. You got to get close to the fallen. Did you hear what I said? There's folk here at Northwest that has taken a fall. The question is, what have you done to help them to recover from their fall? Have you been a part of the problem or are you a part of the solution? You got to get close and personal with those who have fallen. Now notice now, the Bible said that it was only after Paul, watch this, forgot about what he was doing and he placed uh, a fallen person state in first priority and Paul went down and the Bible said he got close to the fallen and he was able to declare that there was still life in the fallen. You think you know why they committed that last sin. You, you heard how bad it was. You heard how, how low it was. You heard how sinful it was. But have you gotten close enough to understand how they fell? From a distance, it might look like the Satan has won. It might look like he has influence over their life. But you got to get close enough to the fallen to see that there's some life. You ain't getting it yet. Life represents the presence of God. And you got to understand, sometimes you got to get close enough to somebody to understand that there's still life in the body. And as long as there's life in the body, there's hope in the spirit. Preach my house. I think I will. Watch this. Watch this. I'm, 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 I'm going to close. Let me be clear. By all indication, out of the text, and, and I want to be clear uh, that uh, uh, I know some folk will question this man's a uh, state of where he was when the first responders got to him. But what you need to understand, it is believed that the young man's life 
was restored, watch this, through the actions of the Apostle Paul based upon his faith, watch this, and his relationship with God. Watch this. Did you get what I said? Watch this. By all indication, the young man was dead. But because of Paul's faith and because of Paul's actions, it brought this young man back to life. There are some folk who are spiritually dead, members of the Northwest Church. What are you doing to help bring them back to life? And you won't do it until you get close enough to do it. I got to close. What then is our proper application, Brother Miles? Those who have taken a terrible fall, even unto spiritual death, they can still live when a faithful servant of God Take the time to get close enough to cover them with their life and with their faith. You know, you ever seen someone who's dying and they, are, they are, have lack of blood in their body and their body is not reproducing enough blood. They give them what's called a blood transfusion. And you can't give a blood transfusion unless you're close enough to those who, I wish I had some help. I'm trying to close. Unless you're close enough to those who need it, and then you can't give it unless you're willing. Watch this, and, and, and as I close, observation number six, the crying of the spectators could not stop until, and they only stopped after the restoration of life was given to the fallen. How many of you know of others who are hurting because of loved ones who have fallen. They are not only crying, but they have been paralyzed with fear, pain, and despair. But I stopped by Northwest to remind you, their fallen loved ones, your fallen loved ones can live again. And their tears and your tears can be dried up only if you your relationship is tight enough with God that he can use you as a vessel of hope and life restoring healing to your loved one. I've come here today to tell some crying mother. I come here today to tell some worried father some sister, brother, grandparent, husband, or wife, that your fallen, your fallen uh, a brother or sister, your fallen loved one uh, can live again. If you would just take the time uh, to allow God to use you uh, to get close enough. Uh, stop talking about them on Facebook. Uh, stop talking about them on Instagram. Uh, stop getting on your phone tweeting about them. Uh, stop texting about their fall. What a day of joy it will be. I say what a day of joy it would be to see that loved one live again. As I go to my seat, I challenge each and every one of you today who it is in your family. Who is it in your life? Who is it in your church family that's had a terrible spiritual fall? And they need uh, to live again. Uh, who is it that needs to be raised uh, from the death of alcoholism? Uh, who is it that need to be raised from the death uh, of drug addiction? Uh, who in your family need to be raised uh, from the death of sexual abuse? Uh, who is it in your family that need to be raised from the death uh, of spousal abuse? Uh, who is it in your family that need to be raised from the death of teenage pregnancy who is it in your family that need to be raised uh, from the death uh, of low self-esteem uh, who is it in your family that need to be raised from the death of anger uh, who is it in your family that need to be raised from the death of resentment uh, who is it in your family that need to be raised from the death of bitterness uh, who is it in your family that need to be raised uh, from the death of depression uh, if truth be told uh, Somebody in this holy sanctuary needs to live again. You've been dead long enough and you need to live again. I said you've been dead long enough and you need to live again. Turn to somebody and tell them you've been dead long enough and you need to live again. And I come to tell you we serve a God who is able to make you live again. 
I got to close. I, I got to quit. I got to quit. I got to quit. Watch this. I'm final. Final observation. Notice as I go to my seat, verse 11 and 12. The text says the next time, watch this. The next time you see Eutychus, he had gotten up. Look, don't you make one mistake. There's some folk that live in your house with you. They've been waiting for you to fall. There's somebody parked next to you today that's hoping you don't get up. Oh, shit. Y'all about to make me say something I don't say in Sunday school. I, there's some folk looking at you right now that hope you fall. But the next time you see Eutychus, in verse 11 and 12, he had gotten up. But how did he get up? Look at the text. The Bible said he got up by the power of God and by the help of the church. Listen, you think you're doing something because you come and sing two songs, eat some crackers and some juice. You think you're doing something because you put a tip in the plate. You think you're doing something because you pass out some books. You think you're doing something because you work in the kitchen. Baby, if you ain't bringing life back to the dead, you ain't doing the work of the church. He came back. Turn to somebody and tell me he came back. By the power of God and the help of the church, I got to quit now. I come to tell somebody in this holy sanctuary that it's time to get up. Turn to somebody and tell them it's time to get up. Come on, if you, if you really believe it, tell them like you mean it. It's time to get up. Get up out of your muck. Get up out of your mess. It's time to get up out of your misery. It's time to get up out of your madness. I feel my help coming now. It's time to get up out of your sickness. It's time to get up out of your sadness. It's time to get up out of your bitterness. It's time to get up out of your depression. I dare you to reach over and shake somebody and tell them it's time to get up. I said, it's time to get up. Why did he get up? Notice verse 11 and 12. Paul and the church had more work to do for the Lord. I said, they had more work to do for the Lord. Turn to somebody and tell them, get out of my way. I got work to do for the Lord. You got to tell the devil, you thought I was done, but I got more work to do. Tell the devil, you thought I wouldn't bounce back, but baby, I bounced back. Tell the devil, you thought you had me counted out, but I got up before the eight count. Turn to somebody and tell them, you look at me now. How do you like me now? Not only only have I gotten up, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Turn to somebody and tell them, oh yeah, I got up, but you ain't seen nothing yet. If the Lord keep putting breath in my body, if he just keep putting energy in my body, if he keep allowing me to put one foot in front of the other, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. You thought I had a praise. You thought I had a song. You thought I had a dance. Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet if he give me strength I'm going to keep on serving him I'm going to keep on praising I'm going to keep on praying I'm going to keep on shouting I'm going to keep on working I was dead but now I'm alive because of the power of God and because of the help of the church if you not helping nobody to live if you're not helping nobody to get up out of their sinful death you ain't doing nothing. Nothing. Will you, will you help your loved one live again? Will you help them recover from their terrible fall? And if truth be told, all of us, Romans 3.23, all of us have fallen. You know what it is, Kim, Kim, you know what it is. See, some of us are so good at falling. Sister <laughs> News and Pia, we just so good at it, so folk can't see us when we fall. 
Because see, watch this. Watch why we good. Watch why we good. Watch why we good. Because if we're not like Eutychus, we don't fall by mistake. You know how you see those fake, phony guys on the NBA, and I don't mean no problem, but I'm man enough to stand on anything I stand on. Yeah. You know how they take these little baby flops now and try to get a foul? Don't you know they practice that? That's why some of them can fool the ref so easy, because they practice how to fall. The reason why some of us ain't been covered because we know how to fall secretly. Get the chip off your shoulder. Come on now. Stop drinking that J juice and learn the true work of the church is to help the fallen to recover and bring life to the dead. If you're here today and you need to be saved from your sins, you need to understand that Jesus died for you. He rose again on the third day. Establish his church. Paul said in 2 Timothy 2 and 10 that salvation is in Jesus Christ. And that means it's in his church. How do you know? Because in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, 23, the Bible said that he's given him the head of all things to the church, which is his body. So when you're in Christ, you're in his church. How do you get in his church? Galatians 3, 27, for as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You got to come to where salvation is. Come today, we will baptize you for the remission of your sin. If you're in the cyber sanctuary, and you're in this area, please call the Northwest Church of Christ. We will sit with you, pray with you, teach you. And if you say yes to the cross, we will baptize you for the remission of your sin. We're going to sing a song now. Please come while we come and sing our invitation song. Will you come right Shovel now? Shovel in my way. God bless. <laughs> you have to cry sometime. Hey, there's so much trouble. So much trouble. So much trouble. So much trouble. Have to cross some. If you live in this life, you're gonna have trouble. I even lay awake at night. Awake at night. Oh, but that's all right. Oh, but that's all right. That's tell them what. Right. Tell them what. Cause I know Do that, that Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes, He will. Come on, sing it. Trouble in my way. Oh, trouble in my way. Sometimes you'll cry. But we do not weep as though we have no hope. Paul said, Down because we're in Christ. We can come boldly before the throne of God. Oh, Lord, I lay awake at Nah. That's all right. Everything all is all right. right. I learned oh that Lord Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it. Do you know that? Jesus, oh Jesus, He will fix it. I know, I, I know Jesus, Jesus, He will. God bless you. Have to have Step in the furnace. In the furnace, long time ago, oh Lord, long time ago, Shadrach, Meshach, oh Lord, Shadrach and the Meshach, and the Bendigo, yeah, and the Bendigo. I tell you that they weren't worried, oh Lord, they weren't worried, and this I know, this yeah, I know, I know that Jesus I is a big sin. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to come out one more time to worship you in spirit and truth. Pray that the things that we have done today was pleasing and acceptable in your sight. 
Pray that you'll be with us all as we get ready to leave this place to make it to our humble abode safe and sound. Uh, pray that you'll be with us until we come and be back here again to praise you once again in spirit and the truth. Pray that you keep your hands on Brother Beard and his family, Brother Ashford and his family, the Olivers and um, his family, their family, that you just keep their minds focused on you no matter what they're going through. Pray that you'll be with everybody else. We, we may not know everybody that's going through things right now, but we know you know. Pray that you just cover, cover them all, especially those that are a member of the household of faith. And all these blessings we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the church say amen. Woo-wee! Y'all, look, I, 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 I must say, I was, I, was, I was a little nervous when he said he had seven. Because I thought he wasn't going to get done with them. But Brother Miles, man, look here. You got done with them seven, and you gave us some more on top of that. So we are, so, we are definitely appreciative of Brother Miles being able to come and share the word of God. Uh, man, I, guys, I said it last week, and I'm, I'm going to stand by this, okay? Uh, Brother Miles and got married, and he showed up preaching mighty hard. Uh-huh. Lord have mercy. I would say the young man, the young man is showing up happy. Amen. Amen. I'm, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me hurry on. Let me hurry on. Uh, but we'd like to uh, thank those that have been able to uh, come to be a part of our worship on today. We also like to thank those that have worshiped from home as well, too. Please, 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 we have, uh, let me, I, I want to invite you guys to our uh, Bible study. Last week, we had a uh, guest to uh, share out me to uh, take part in our Bible study, and we're looking forward to this Wednesday as well. So, uh, please, if you don't mind, just, 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 just share with us, and we will gladly share the word of God with you. Uh, until, Lord's willing, next week. We will see you guys again. Thank you.